politics, religion, relationships, who has the best chicken nuggets. These are just a few contentious topics that are known for being divisive, ending friendships, ruining Thanksgiving dinner, and creating extremely productive dialogue on the internet. Now, I believe that if you ask the question, are you an open-minded person, that most people would respond, yes. But is that actually reality? Let's talk about it. So just to let you know, this video is inspired by a spoken word film that I dropped last week titled, Can I Change Your Mind? So make sure you check it out. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment, like it, share it, all that good stuff. So to start off, just let me make it clear on what I mean by being open-minded. So to me, it's being able to consider new information, new arguments, and a new perspective different from yours with the intent to understand. The official definition is the willingness to consider new ideas unprejudiced. And just keep in mind that consideration does not mean acceptance. So how do you know if you're an open-minded person or not? Here are some things to consider. First, being genuinely curious. One of the things that I believe drives open-mindedness is a hunger for knowledge, understanding, and even new experiences. And so you have to ask yourself, when you are presented with new ideas, especially when those ideas contradict with yours, does your curiosity kick in? Do you start wondering why someone holds certain beliefs or how they came to the conclusion that they came to, or if they have new information that you're unaware of? Or do you automatically reject these ideas and let your assumptions start to control what you think? See, I don't believe that most people are intellectually curious. I think that most people look for information to support what they already believe. You know, confirmation bias. There's a saying that says curiosity killed the cat. I think that's about being nosy. I think curiosity is actually a good thing and it leads to you learning a little bit more. I also think younger people tend to be more curious and older people tend to be more stuck in their ways. Okay, the second thing is when your initial reaction to opposing views or having your beliefs challenged is frustration. Now, you see this in politics all the time. It's one of the reasons politics annoy me. I think in the political arena, different perspectives get dismissed all the time simply because a person goes, well, he's a Democrat or they're a Republican and so therefore I'm not going to listen to anything they have to say. So as a result of this, what people do is they attack someone's political affiliation instead of attacking the argument. See, I think that ad hominems are a huge part of today's back and forth conversations and I think it's a huge problem. For example, if I were to say that Chick-fil-A has the best nuggets in the world because according to blah 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 study, they offer the greatest nutritional value for people. And then someone responds by saying, you're just a nugget egomaniac and who cares anyways and, and your forehead is big. Now, and although it may be true that my forehead is of the larger variety, the person attacked me personally and possibly lowering my self-esteem a bit, but they weren't able to attack my argument. Like I said before, this is very common and it actually could be a sign of low intelligence and also a sign of closed-mindedness. I know y'all see this a lot on social media, which leads me to number three, which is silence is your solution. Now this happens a lot on social media as well. One group of people holding certain beliefs want to cancel or silence people who hold a different belief and vice versa. The problem with this is that it's a way to completely avoid engaging in different opinions, which is a slippery slope, by the way. Hearing and engaging with different viewpoints is necessary. It's important for innovation and creativity, for problem solving, for expanding your knowledge. I mean, let's be honest, no one really gets canceled anyway. Okay, we're just gonna move on. Okay, the fourth thing is facts do not change your opinion. Now, this one is just weird to me. I don't know if you've ever heard someone say something that isn't factually true, and then when you give them new information or they discover new information, they continue to believe the thing that they believed before the new fact that they found. Why are, why are people like this? Why? Why? It's like someone saying, in my opinion, the safest way to travel is by car. And then I would counter that with, well, it's actually safer to fly. This has been statistically proven. There have been studies on it. So yeah, the airplane is the way to go. But then they're like, nah, I don't believe that. But look, this is just my opinion and I'm entitled to it. I'm completely okay with someone having a different opinion. But when there's an actual fact that exists that has been proven, like, all right, do you. Good luck out there.
<laughs> All right, the fifth one is you and your friends, or I guess your family too, are in an echo chamber. I think that we tend to flock towards people who have similar beliefs and similar values as we do. And I actually don't see anything wrong with that, except when you and your friends start to create a bubble and you live inside that bubble and the way you see the world and your opinions of the world are created within that bubble. Meaning no one ever challenges each other's positions. No one ever pushes back on anything. No one ever seeks new information. It's all in the bubble. If my daughter was awake right now and she heard me say bubble, she would go absolutely nuts. And the dangerous thing about this is it breeds ground to be unknowingly closed-minded. It's like someone who eats at a local steakhouse, right? And they're having a conversation about steak and they're like, I don't care what no one says, the local steakhouse has the best steak in the world. And then they also have friends who have only eaten at that steakhouse and they validate each other's opinion. Multiple people with one experience, basically. Now, in contrast, you have someone who has eaten at that local steakhouse, but they've also traveled across town to eat at that steakhouse. They also ate at a steakhouse in a couple other states. They also went to another country and ate at a few steakhouses, right? So their opinion and their perspective on who has the best steak is a little more well-rounded than the person who only ate at the local steakhouse. But in a conversation between those two, they're probably not going to agree because one is stuck in a bubble one isn't and the one stuck in the bubble doesn't realize it and the last one is do you question things especially your own views now one of the things that i love to do is i get on youtube and i search for different commentary and debate channels who touch on ideas and beliefs that are different from mine as i said in the spoken word video i never want to be a person who is stuck in my ways i always want to have the ability to evolve especially as i get older i think that questioning things is super important even when someone presents an idea that makes complete sense. And the benefit of questioning things is basically more information. It's how we see the whole picture. Opinion A might sound great, right? But I haven't heard opinion B, C, or D, or however many other opinions there are. And so to really form an accurate opinion, I would need to kind of discover these different opinions, understand them, see what other people think, or even just develop my own opinion and draw from others to really solidify what I believe. And I even think it's more important to question yourself. This is how we move towards self-growth, and this is how we ensure that we don't just accept other people's opinions as our own. Unfortunately, we live in a time where headlines, word of mouth, social media posts are the sources of our information and the foundations of a lot of people's beliefs. We are easily swayed because of the lack of knowledge because we don't question things enough. So let me say this, being closed-minded isn't always a bad thing. Matter of fact, I think at times we are all closed-minded. It's kind of natural. And for different reasons, sometimes it's fear, sometimes it's laziness, sometimes it's stubbornness. It could be a lot of different reasons. I think in general, we should strive to be more open-minded. We should be open to considering the views of others. And just to reiterate, seeking the understanding of other perspectives does not mean automatically changing your mind. I just wanna make that clear because I think a lot of people think being open-minded means accepting others' opinions or agreeing with other people and that's not what that is and just to keep it real i'm far from perfect and i just try to be as balanced as i possibly can but being open-minded has a lot of benefits it can lead to personal growth deeper insight self-awareness i mean the list goes on so i think that it's an important skill to develop and you would massively benefit from doing that okay it's almost like four o'clock in the morning and i gotta get some sleep i have no energy left i have literally given you my last bit of energy so until the next time it's your boy queso Peace.